to this issue, I will try to be slow, as slow as much as I can. Let me take off my glasses. You know, in the High Court nowadays, it seems as if our local judges have a problem with advocates. It seems as if they have a problem with advocates. Because look, I might be ignorant about the practice directives, where they come from, you know. I would not like to believe that they come from heaven, you know, down to earth, without being discussed, without inputs of legal practitioners like advocates. But recently, I look at the practice directives in the high courts. It seems as if they are aimed at destroying careers of advocates or making a way with advocates, especially in the high courts when it comes to uh, personal injury matters of the RAF or the Road Accident Fund, of which I find it very unfortunate. I mean, if a practice directive says you must file a memorandum of agreement a day before trial, what does it say about a defendant? I mean, the defendant attorney won't brief the advocate, and what happens to that advocate? It means we're reducing or we're cutting away certain legal practitioners. And those legal practitioners, they pay tax, they buy fuel, they've got families, they contribute in this country as much as the judges are contributing, or some have contributed. And others have contributed negatively because we know that prior 94, every lawyer who practiced before 1994 was an apartheid lawyer. But I don't want to get into that. The issue that I want to deal with is the issue of practice directives. I have never been consulted as an advocate. I don't remember making an input. I know that maybe social media is a wrong platform to address it, but I'm talking to my colleagues because I'm surprised that most of these practice uh, directives, advocates are not happy, attorneys are not happy. They talk in corners. And I don't see a unified voice and say, okay, let us deal with this matter as a collective. But I'm quite concerned because this is my country too. I've got the right to trade. Yes, I agree with judges that they should curtail or do away with those unnecessary costs. But where it seems as if there's an element of doing away with legal practitioners, they may as well go to law, law schools and advise these university councils to do away with LLP cut LLB altogether, because right up to now, LLB or law degree was the only degree that empowers, especially a black child in this country, to be economically free and independent. Most all other degrees, it makes you to become a runaround employee, you know, for the corporate sector that has been oppressing our mothers, oppressing us for centuries of years, but at least a law degree allowed one to be economically independent because you can set up a table in an office and you practice. But if judges, especially our black judges, are going to be involved in trying to cut out advocates, people with families, to feed people who had dreams. I mean, I had one of the most ridiculous comments. One advocate says they were somewhere, you know, in the high court, and the judge says to advocates, yes, we see you on Facebook, you're flashing cars, you know, but why would the judges seem to be jealous? Some of the judges, they've been practicing for years as attorneys. They've made money out of this fund, the road accident fund. Some they didn't. Well, it's choice. Same as I want to be a teacher, it's a calling. I want to be a doctor, nurse, it's a calling. We all choose our respective fields according to what we want. But it seems as if in the high courts, in the near future, maybe two years from now, like the ANC government has decided, whenever black people try to make life for themselves, making money without the interference of the government, they will come in and cut that 
It seems as if the only people who are supposed to make money in this country are the comrades. Good for the judges because they've got a fixed amount that they get every month and retirement packages. But it's very unfortunate because most of the judges, they were attorneys themselves, some were advocates themselves, yet today, they want to do away with the process which helped them to be where they are. Where are these practice directives coming from? It cannot be right, it cannot be fair that they come from heaven down, you know, to the ground without the inputs of the legal practitioners, where people denying us cost. I mean, for the life of me, I cannot understand this. White people, they've been practicing this IRF civil litigation for years, making money. Now the majority of the people that are coming in are black. The majority of judges today, they are black. You yeah. know, there's a problem with Africans making money. Why is it a problem when black advocates are making money? Because that money, they're going to spend it in the same community. And they deserve that money because they're also workers. We are trying to build this country. How does it help to cut costs like we've seen now? It seems as if the most efficient uh, governance mechanism is to cut costs. Cut costs at the banks, cut costs at SAPC, cut costs everywhere. Then we're going to have politicians in parliament making money and judges and few guys who are in the corporate sector. The corporate sector, that does not accommodate black people. Most black people, like we know, that 80% of litigation is RAF. So when judges take decisions that are aimed at frustrating legal practitioners, are aimed at reducing the number of practitioners, because most people now, they're starting to say, hey, they might as well look elsewhere. What about those who are coming? in into the profession where must they go people have got bonds to pay then they must go to the street checks a lawyer advocate living in tips load is that fair no 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 sometimes these things must be discussed is that fair why is it this practice directives are not discussed with legal practitioners so that you can make inputs I mean, even factory workers, they've got that liberty. At union meeting, at shop strat level, they discuss, but the most educated people in the country, the learned friends, they're not. They're not treated with humility. They're not treated with dignity. You just hear, one day you wake up, they say the new practice directive says this, and you look at that, you know, this thing is getting into my pocket. But I, for one, I cannot say, or have a say, on other people's pockets what judges are earning because directly or indirectly some of these practice directives they are aimed at killing the profession and it's very unfortunate and I, I, my appeal, my greatest appeal is that some of our black judges do look into this because I don't believe that judges uh, exist in vacuum you know we come a long way with this country and I think that the judges must also assist us uh, I know that I might get reprisal from this, but it's okay, you know. But sometimes certain things got to be said, you know. Our black judges, you know, I'm, I'm saying I will emphasize black, you know, because majority of judges that are coming in now are black. And I think that black people should understand our circumstances, where we come from. Most of the people come from rural areas, you know, they wanted to be lawyers one day. Now they've got an opportunity to be lawyers. Now they've got an opportunity to improve their lives and those who depend on them. All of a sudden, boom, a Hiroshima bomb that the law practice is dead. It's dead. Is that fair? 